Welcome! Today we have a look at how to use IT server racks in the music world. The reason for this endeavor is my old and trusty 24 height unit music rack that is wasting a bit of space above it and also I would like to add a bit of rack gear that I have collected over the years and therefore I had to turn to the IT server world because I could not find anything uh, appropriate in the music stores and so finally I decided to order a frame on casters on wheels which is also still kind of transportable um, the package weighs around 35 kilos which means you can still pick it up in the post office and uh, will not have to fight too much with the transport um, there are much sturdier racks of course and much bigger ones with doors and back walls and the like but obviously those are going to take much much more room which I honestly don't have and of course also the transport is going to be quite an endeavor before we dive into this, let me also quickly state that uh, I'm not endorsed by the manufacturer at all. I just simply looked what is available in the area and what I could have delivered close to home. Everything is included in the set, apart from the wrench for the nuts and uh, the Allen wrench, well, the small one is included and uh, it's actually fairly easy to assemble the frame because you just slide all the parts into each other and then you tighten the corners with the screws and nuts i strongly recommend to get a decent wrench for that because these nuts have to be put inside the frame uh, which is quite hard to reach so you need this kind of a tilted wrench in order to be able to hold the nuts in place uh, otherwise this uh, this part of the job is going to be a bit frustrating. The other part that is to be assembled is the base that will hold the whole frame in place and that consists basically of two pieces of metal with casters underneath and some supports that need to be fixed and apparently you can fix these supports in two places because there is holes for two different positions although the instruction only mentions one interestingly um, the rear position is a bit tight because of one protruding piece of metal but I found that anyway you can also assemble it there and it might make sense in this case to assemble it in this alternative position putting the frame back by one step because I don't have very deep and heavy music gear and by moving the whole construction back by one slot will actually give a better balance because the weight will be more in the middle of the construction then we have the casters which have to be put underneath and of course we have to remember to put the casters with the brakes to the front and without the brakes to the rear these casters have their own screws and the nuts are already fixed in place in these metal elements then on this base we can also see that the nuts are already in place to hold the frame so the frame gets both screwed to the bottom and then also screwed to the support to the diagonal support that is going to be behind the frame so here you can see that at the bottom of the frame there's actually openings in order to fix the frame to the bottom and this is actually the most tiring part of the assembly because all the screws need to be put in place and they're quite hard to reach as you will see in a moment and now we can finally add the base with the casters and I would recommend that you first fix those screws that are on the outside of the frame towards the bottom and the reason being that they are the easiest to reach and the easiest to fix and once those hold everything in place you can then easily take your time with the other screws without everything falling off while you're trying to fix it the tricky part here is the screws that secure the bottom of the frame um, the problem is that these are allen screws and it's very hard to get into that very uh, small space with an allen wrench just take your time luckily um, there is an opening in the frame 
on the side and if you have a torchlight you can shine the light on those screws and secure them while you're seeing what you are doing and at the same time you can also hold the frame in place. This is probably the most tricky part of the assembly and once you have achieved that then everything is in place. We repeat of course the operation on the other side of the frame and now we have the bottom parts fixed to the frame and the frame is ready to be set up and you can also see that the frame is one position back in respect to what it originally was planned to be at least that's how the instructions depicted it and therefore I have the weight concentrated more in the center of the platform which is exactly how I wanted it. Now we can set it up and uh, as you can see it stands just neatly beside my old rack at this point still and uh, you can actually see that the depth is basically identical at least visually to the original rack. Of course you do have the protruding part with the casters so it is going to use a bit more real estate than uh, my old rack but visually I have to say it does not really feel much closer simply because the actual front uh, of the equipment is not going to be closer than before. The frame of the rack is quite thick. Obviously it has to be sturdy enough to hold all the equipment by itself whereas my old rack has a much thinner outer edge because there is the whole wall holding the structure in place but it doesn't really matter it doesn't feel too big and also inside the frame there is enough room to put surplus cables so anything that is too long to keep it dangling on the rear of the racks you can actually stuff into the sides of the rack and uh, they are also opened so you can actually access those cables if needed. First of all there is some rack nuts and screws included to get started but they are only around 30 pieces so you can get maybe some seven pieces of uh, equipment into the rack and you will need to buy more. Uh, there are several depths of the rack nut cages and typically you should go for 2.1 millimeters. Um, the top one here is too deep and uh, it will be loose in its cage and uh, you will have to fight when you're screwing your gear in because rack gear usually is fixed in four spots and the bottom ones are the important ones that will keep the rear of the rack gear straight. So use the best nuts you have for the bottom holes of your rack device and then the top pair can be also a pair of more loose nuts. They are not so important, they don't give as much stability. Another good tip is to plan your rack setup ahead of time. I used an Excel spreadsheet to plan which devices go where, trying to run uh, as short cables as possible to the mixers, so putting the mixers in strategic places, spreading the weight in a certain way, also making sure that certain rack gear that is not very deep is not stuck between pieces of rack that are extremely deep and then you can't reach the rear if you need to. I also thought a bit about the ventilation, meaning that extremely hot devices I tried to keep far apart and uh, maybe underneath some other rack gear that is not as deep. Thankfully the rack also has numbered levels so these stickers are actually quite handy because then you can immediately identify which rack device goes where based on your original plan. I would have preferred these stickers to be a bit more on the outside because once you put the gear it's actually mostly covering these stickers but Anyway, it was a nice addition and it made it much more quick and you can also be sure that you haven't counted wrongly and you started assembling the gear starting from a wrong point. When filling the rack, it makes sense to start from the bottom simply because it will give more stability due to the weight distribution. Do not start from the top with the heaviest gear. That said, I would actually leave the lowest slot open until you're completely finished and the reason is that typically during assembly you're dropping a lot of things especially nuts um, into the frame 
and these naturally collect at the bottom because the frame is hollow. In my case, the bottom slot is occupied by a power strip with a switch. And uh, actually, I could not fix that to the front rail at all because there was a cable coming out on the side of the power strip and that was colliding with the second rail, with the rear rail. So what I did is I actually set the whole power strip back by one step. I fixed it to the rear rail. Um, and by doing so, actually, the front remains a bit more accessible. I can still collect any screws that fall down here. And also, one nice advantage is that this leaves a lot of space for any kind of bulky AC adapters that you want to plug in. Because the frame is hollow, you can basically use that space, which you wouldn't be able to do if the power strip had been in front. Thank you for your time, and uh, if you happen to have any questions about how to set up your rack, or if I can help with any questions that you possibly might have, feel free to post a question underneath here, and uh, I'll make sure that I'll answer it in due time. Thank you very much, have a good time, enjoy your studio setup, and see you next time.